The Philadelphia Flyers are one of several teams battling for one of the final playoff spots in the East, but they are slumping as of late. Rachel Donner joins us to discuss that and all things Flyers coming up on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. It is my pleasure to welcome to the show my usual Friday co-host and, of course, a co-host of Locked On Flyers, Rachel Donner. And, uh, Rachel, good to have you here on a Monday for a change. And uh, yep. <laughs> Flyers struggling as of late, four losses in a row. It, it seems like they're one of several teams in the East who are – stumbling while trying to get one of these last playoff spots nailed down. What what has been missing in the Flyers' play lately that was there earlier in the season? Well, I think that the issue is that they're tired. And uh, John Tortorella said as much post-game uh, after that awful loss to the Blackhawks on Saturday. And this is something that Russ and I over at Locked On Flyers have talked about all season long, that what John Tortorella has accomplished here is very, very good mm. in terms of this team overachieving. Um, and, you know, they're a good structured team. And generally, even when they lose, they play well. And I would say that's that's been the case for most of the season. They haven't had nearly as many clunkers as they've had all, you know, since last year. And this was definitely a clunker. And this is the consequence of what John Tortorella's system does, right? So they get big results, um, tremendous, you know, pressure on the PK uh, offensively with that power kill. But it takes a lot out of you. And blocking a lot of shots takes a lot out of you. And so now we're just dealing with the tail end of the season consequences for choosing that way to achieve your ends. And I don't think it was a bad thing what he did. I, I think it was good. And it was like the the way to get the most out of this team. But you have to recognize that this is going to be the end result at a certain point. So how how does the team address that? How do you fix mm. being tired? That is the, the question of the day because uh, Tortorella has said that he can't have the team practice as much as he would like uh, to fix some of the things because they're too tired and he doesn't want to take it out of them. Um, I think other teams are you know, trying to combat it with being a little bit more physical with the Flyers than they have been just to, you know, because they know the wear and tear is there. And I think the, the, the solution is to play fresh legs, like play some of the younger guys on the team. Now, you know, uh, they just got Nick Sealer back into the lineup. So one of those younger guys had to sit on the blue line side of things. They made the choice to sit one of the younger guys in Ali Lixel and put uh, Dennis Gurianov, who is younger, but nowhere near as talented as Lixel. So, you know, some choices are being made in what I think is an effort to get some people with more experience in the lineup to get those wins, but they're tired. So I think that's part of the solution here is just consistently playing all the younger guys. Goaltending has been an issue for the Flyers, especially since the suspension of Carter Hart. And yet on Friday, uh, a big move, a uh, literally and figuratively mm -hmm. uh, Ivan Fedotov, six foot eight, uh, goaltender signed coming over from Russia. What impact do you think he may have? And, uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about the timing of this because, you know, right. is he ready to step in during the stretch run here? 
Well, those are all excellent questions because I think, you know, we talked about who I, Ivan Fedotov is and what he brings a little bit on the Friday show of Locked on NHL, if you haven't um, heard that yet. But we all know he's a talented goaltender, right? But there is an adjustment period and the timing just has to do with the end of his KHL season. You just bring him over because he's available. They were going to let him out, like just do it, right? So I don't really question that. The question is, why make him the official backup goalie in the Flyers organization with zero games of NHL experience under his belt, having to make an adjustment? And I said this on the Monday show for Locked on Flyers, with him as the backup, there's no way you're pulling Sam Erson from that game to get a momentum shift, right? So you have him in the backup position, but unless there was an injury, there was no way he was going in that game. And I would surmise that that is going to be the case against the Islanders um, today and that he won't get a game in until next weekend. So to get enough practice sessions in with these guys and to learn how to play and, and communicate with the, with the blue liners in front of them. So I, it's a, it is a huge risk, but I, I, on the other side of things, as I've said, this is a season that the flyers are playing with house money on. So if you're going to take risks, do it this season. That, that does make sense. As far as Urson goes, how tired is he at this point? Yeah, I think he's a little tired. Uh, I think that, you know, this is a lot of pressure too, where he was expected to be the backup this season and has had to take on the number one um, since Carter Hart left the organization. And it's not that he isn't ready for it as a goaltender. He is a tremendously skilled goaltender. Um, I think that the volume of work is something that we saw him take on last season with the Phantoms, where he was pushed too hard and played too many games and we saw his game diminish and that could be happening a little bit, but honestly it's been more the the team in front of him than anything. So I'm not going to be critical of Sam Erson because of all of those circumstances put together. Um, I think he's had a couple of bad games, but for the most part has played really well in net and deserves the number one position. So we're under 10 games left. The Flyers are in the middle of this race to make the playoffs where most of the teams are faltering. What are the keys for the Flyers to finish strong and get into the postseason? Well, these are all like do or die games this upcoming week. There's three games this week for the Flyers. They're going to do a lot of scoreboard watching for a few days off in between uh, tonight's matchup against the Islanders all the way until next weekend where they have a back-to-back against the Sabres and Blue Jackets. So not, you know, overall, like hugely intimidating opponents, no offense. But I think that, um, you know, the Islanders game is going to be tough. But in theory, they should be able to battle through those other two games, especially having a few days off in between. They got to rack up those points because the scoreboard watching in the days in between is going to have a huge impact. And as far as on the ice, what are some of the things they need to to improve upon in these games? Well, we've known all season their power play is absolutely dreadful. It's like the worst in the league. But um, the penalty kill, which has been really good for them all season, is starting to falter a little bit. Again, because of the exhaustion, the tired legs, the wear and tear. Um, And I think that's something they're going to have to focus on and being a little bit more structured defensively on that and focus on that rather than the power kill aspect of things. All right, Rachel, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you and your co-host on social media? Yeah, I co-host Locked On Flyers each and every weekday on uh, on the Locked On Podcast Network. And uh, we are at Locked On Flyers on all your social medias out there. And I am at our Miriam on Twitter. My co-host, Russ Cohen, is at Sportsology pretty much everywhere as well. All right, Rachel, thanks so much. And uh, looking forward to seeing you again on Friday. Yeah, and tonight. (laughs) And tonight. (laughs) Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, 
New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. And hockey fans, check out all the odds and prop bets for your favorite team and players on the FanDuel app. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 